Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and I'm back today with another video. And today I'm going to be talking about my physical TBR, or the books that I own but I have not read um, for anyone who is not in the know in the booktube world. So this is quite a popular topic to discuss here on booktube and it's something that I have been thinking a lot about particularly as I, so a little background on me, um, I graduated from uh, undergrad or college, university, whatever you want to call it, about a year ago and since then for a variety of different reasons, one of which being COVID-19, I am still living at home. However, uh, at some point in the next year or so, I do plan to move to my own place, uh, especially because I am planning on going to grad school in the fall of 2021 and likely will be moving to wherever uh, grad school may take me in the next year. So since I have that kind of in my mind as like this time next year uh, project, I wanted to kind of evaluate my unread TBR and try to make an action plan in terms of reducing it as I don't want to be bringing boxes of boxes of unread books to wherever my next home may be. So I thought I would kind of start this video off with some like stats about what my unread books are and then go into kind of a plan that I have for like reducing my TBR to the ideal number that I want it to be which is somewhere around like 25 or 30 books I think. I do have a like unread bookshelf which uh, you probably have seen in previous videos although this is my like new read bookshelf but I do have like a little mini unread bookshelf that fits about 50 books so no more than 50 is kind of my like basic limit goal but then ideally 20 to 30 as I think that's about as many books as I can keep inside my mind of like actively being excited about them which um, just kind of briefly add my kind of philosophy in terms of ATBR. I like having books that I haven't read on my shelves. So I like having that variety. However I do think I have a bit of a problem and I see this a lot of kind of TBR discussions in terms of there are books on my TBR that I purchased several years ago that my reading tastes have changed or I bought them fairly cheap at the time and I wasn't really thinking do I actually want to read this book and now I have it sitting in my book potentially from like two years ago. Um, I actively started keeping track of the books that I was bringing into my collection about two years ago like July of 2018 is when I have like pretty solid records and since then my Excel spreadsheet has documented literally every single book I've bought since then which I do love buying books so that's another reason that I want to continue to have a TBR um, going into an independent bookstore and supporting them is one of my favorite pastimes and I'm very excited to eventually do that in the future. Um, so I don't ever see myself getting to like a zero TBR or even kind of stopping my book buying. I already am slowing it down in terms of the physical books I'm bringing in just for like financial reasons and also because as I said I love that like in-store experience and online shopping is just not really the same. So those are kind of all my philosophy pieces and I do think that I can purchase a couple books each month while still reducing my TBR especially because ideally I want to be supporting my independent bookstore pretty much exclusively and just um, you know I'm happy to pay full price for even a hardcover book if that's like the only book that I'm buying that month um, as that's only like $25 and I'm happy to put $25 of my budget towards buying a new book that I'm really excited about. So that's kind of my philosophy going into this project. Um, so to get into the numbers, I currently have 101 books unread that I have in some capacity. That number is actually technically 106 because I have five books that are on their way to me but I don't input books into my Excel spreadsheet until I actually have them but we're gonna go with 106. So I, I have technically 106 and that's the number I'm going to be talking about although those five books are not like currently in my possession. So of that 106 however 21 of those are ebooks. Now I do have a couple ebooks that I bought for as like a Kindle deal a couple years ago and then I quickly realized that both I don't really like supporting Amazon so I don't really like to buy Kindle deals and I also am just like not thinking of those books as books that I physically own. So I do have a couple of those but mainly that number is now like NetGalley eARCs or books that I've gotten for free that are like romance novellas or something. Um, so those 21 books as they are either eARCs which I have like a plan to get to before their publication date or they're like romance books I don't really I'm not really worried about those books and I'm not considering them as part of this project just because I think of my ebook reading as like separate from my physical book reading. So those as I said there's 21 of those which actually brings my number down to 85 books and then I have six books 
that are like sitting unread on my shelves but they're not technically in my mind like TBR books and that is mainly because they're books that I don't think I will get rid of even if even when I do read them. My kind of book keeping philosophy is that I have to once I've read a book I will only keep it if it like really either meant a lot to me in terms of like an emotional connection to it, it was a really great book in general and I just would generally want to keep it on my shelves, or it occasionally has a really pretty cover and I like liked it but I didn't absolutely love it then sometimes it gets to stay. Um so <laughs> for books that I like just thought were okay I usually get rid of them however these six are books that I don't think I would get rid of even if I didn't particularly love them unless I like absolutely hated them because they have some sort of like nostalgia value or they just I want to have them on my shelf. So there's just one fiction book and that's a classic that I got for like a dollar and I do eventually want to read it. It's just I don't want to include it in this particular project and that's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This isn't even like a cute version of this but I like I literally got it for like a dollar or two and I do want to read it. It's just I am fine with it kind of sitting on my shelves unread for longer than this like year-long goal that I'm setting myself. So there's that one. Then there's two that are more like non-fiction classics that I think of more almost as like referential works as opposed to a book that you would like read straight through. So the first of those is A San Kelly Almanac by Aldo Leopold. This one is something that I've read like parts of but I've never read it cover to cover nor do I know if I even really want to do that. So this is again one that I just would keep as a reference not necessarily one that I um, I'm gonna read straight through. Same goes for C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity. I am very into kind of learning more about Christian theology. I wouldn't call myself a Christian or even um, a religious person necessarily but Christianity and um, kind of greater ideas of theology um, like I'm a classic agnostic really are very fascinating to me and something I really like to learn more about and this is kind of a foundational text in terms of thinking more about like theology and what value it has for like American society or like general society today. So that's Mere Christianity again kind of a more referential text. Another one that is like kind of more referential for me is uh, Second Nature, A Gardener's Education by Michael Pollan. I love gardening. I've talked about it a bit before on my channel and so this one is again one that I don't know if I'll read cover to cover but I do want to keep in terms of a reference to like gardening and like what it means. Even though this is not necessarily like a how-to, it's more like Pollan's own experience but I'm still like intrigued enough to keep this around for an indefinite period of time. And then I have two like hefty biographies, both of which have like high nostalgia value for me. So the first is uh, Victoria by Anne Wilson. So I got this as a Christmas present like several years ago. I read part of it but I didn't finish it. Um, Victoria is, I don't want to say my favorite historical figure because she is uh, obviously, you know, in thinking about like post, I've jerked my camera a little bit so sorry. In terms of like a post-colonial analysis of history, Victoria is not a great historical figure but I do find her very fascinating. Um, the Young Victoria, which is a very silly movie, is like one of my favorite movies and she's been a like historical figure that I'm very interested in for many years and I think that will continue to be true. However, this is like a huge biography of her and I'm actually not even sure if this is necessarily where I want to start with learning more about Victoria but because it's a Christmas present I'm like not going to get rid of it so there's that one. And then the other one is The Ballad of Bob Dylan. Again, Bob Dylan obviously has some complexities, but I love Bob Dylan. I love folk music in general. Bob Dylan is obviously a huge founder of like the modern American folk music scene and this biography is actually by a family friend so it's like personalized to me so I'm like not going to get rid of this. But again, it's not something that I'm like eager, desperate to get to. Um, but eventually I do want to get to these two biographies, just not within this like year long time frame. So if I did my math correctly that should be 79 books and then there are a couple other ones that I just wanted to point out that kind of lowers that number even more. So I do count the books that I'm currently reading as my like own TBR in my Excel document until I've either completely given up on the book or I've finished it. And as I said in my Friday Reads video which should have gone up about a week ago I think this video is going to be going up this time next week. It's the 12th right now so I just finished filming my Friday reads. But the three books that I'm currently reading right now are The Gulf by Jackie Davis, Perennials by Mandy Berman, and All Adults Here by Emma Straub. So these ones are going to come off my TBR in the near future but they are technically still on there right now. 
Then I also have three books on my Excel spreadsheet that are not actually technically my books. The first of which is one of the five that's on its way to me, and that's The Weight of Ink. Um, I can't remember who it is by at this moment, but I'll put a picture right here. And that is one of my mom's book club books that I ended up ordering for her, which I'm intrigued about, but it is technically her book. I definitely have Louise Penny's Still Life, which I got for my mom for Christmas a couple years ago, and she read it and enjoyed it, but since I got it for her for Christmas, it's technically her book, and I this is a series I do want to try, but I'm not like, you know, desperate to get to it. And then the other is the next Ann Patchett book I want to read, which is State of Wonder. This is also one that I think I'll likely read in the next year, but it is not technically mine so it's not going to move with me to my next destination so it is also not like technically included in all of these stats. So that should bring us down to 73 books. So then there are also four books that I'm counting in my TBR but I do want to just acknowledge which are sequels in the Realm of the Elderlings series. So I'm currently on Fool's Fate which is book nine of the Realm of the Elderlings and book three of the Tawny Man trilogy. I've been reading this series very slowly since 2017 when I went abroad and had a lot of time to read. I finished Golden Fool which was the second one in the Tawny Man trilogy back in February and I've since just been kind of taking a break from from reading this series because these books are just like so long and they take me usually several months to read them because I read them very slowly but I do want to get to this one soon but because my one of my local new and used bookstores that has a really strong science fiction and fantasy section. Someone periodically donates theirs and you can get them for like two or three dollars. So I have, I have all four of the Rainwild Chronicle books, but I obviously can't get to these ones until I get to Fool's Fate. But I do count these ones like on my TBR in terms of trying to get it down to this 20 to 30 number. And then we have a few books that I am counting towards my TBR but are already kind of designated for other tasks. So the first of which are my six African women writers books which I will put a link to my announcement for that up in the cards above. Additionally I have my virtual book club that I do with two of my best friends from college. Our book for June and July is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante so I will be reading this by the end of July. Additionally, I believe Lindsay from Lindsay's Bookish Life and I are still doing a buddy read of Fates and Fairies by Lauren Groff in July, so this one I'll also be reading in July. And then I also have two of the books that I am reading for the Booktube Prize are of the five that are on their way to me, so those two I will also be reading. So if my calculations are correct, all the books that are kind of previously designated into certain categories come to 63 books. So since that's still about 30 to 40 books away from where I ideally want to be in a year, and there are some books, as I said, that I have purchased a while ago that I just am not sure if now I still want to read them, I have decided to make a two-part challenge for myself that if I like this I will probably continue to do it until about a year from now when I have ideally gotten my TBR down which is to create eight books that are on a chopping block as well as eight books that are like five star predictions. For me five star predictions are uh, pretty difficult to do as a five star read is not necessarily anything that I can really quantify it's just like a feeling that I have or it's a book that has a really strong emotional connection for me however a four star read is something I really enjoy and would be happy as an outcome so I don't want to necessarily call them five star predictions because even if they're not five stars but I still really like them then I will count that as a success so um, I have the 16 books in total that are kind of my chopping block books as well as my five star really enjoy and would recommend little collection um, that I'm hoping to read over the next four months. So ideally I'm going to get them finished by mid-October. So I have the rest of the month of June, July, August, September, and then half of October is what I'm going to give myself to read these books. Maybe towards the end of October. We'll see. So the first of which is one that I've had on my shelves for ages and ages and that's The Enchanted by Renee Denfield. This is probably one of the only books on my shelves that is kind of a like booktube made me buy it book. I heard a lot of people talking about this book like many years ago and have since like had it in my consciousness and then I saw it one day at my used bookstore for like relatively cheap and I picked it up and I just don't know if I actually am ever interested in reading this one. This is definitely one of the books that's been on my shelves the longest and I have never had any inclination to pick it up. I had it with me at college, didn't pick it up there. Um, I've, I've had it about a year here and I haven't picked it up. So this is the first one that I'm likely to probably get rid of if I don't 
read it by October. So the next one I have is 10,000 Saints by Eleanor Henderson. I read and loved the 12 Mile Straight this year about two years ago um, although I didn't particularly love the reading experience of that book however the amount of research and the thematic elements of the 12 Mile Straight was something that I returned to again and again and I still think about that quite that book quite fondly. Um, it was one of my favorites of 2018 when I read it. So I was really excited to read more of Eleanor Henderson's work. So I picked this one up on clearance at like half price books or something and I just haven't ever been inclined to read it. There are elements of it that I'm very intrigued about, namely that it takes place in Vermont which is a place that I really like to read about as it often is very like place-based oriented writing. But the rest of the story just doesn't super uh, intrigue me. So this is another one that is on the chopping block. Another fiction selection we have is Other People Will Be Married by Emma Straub. As I said earlier in this video, I'm currently reading Emma Straub's latest release because I read and loved her 2016 release, Modern Lovers. However, and then I bought this one sometime in the inner meaning time, I think around 2018, and I just have not ever read it. Um, I have read one, I read the first story and it was fine, but I am wondering, and I think this will especially be made clear once I finish All Adults Here, if I've kind of outgrown Emma Straub, and if so, this one is probably gonna have to go because I just don't know if her short stories are something that I'm gonna really enjoy, especially because they're from 2011, so they're from quite a while ago. So yeah, this is another one that is on the chopping block. The next one is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. So I read and really enjoyed The Paying Guest by Sarah Waters again a couple of years ago. But it just, I don't know, her books really <laughs> dragged on and so I'm kind of hesitant to read this one especially because I think it's even longer than The Paying Guest. However this one is one that people seem to really really enjoy and I didn't necessarily dislike The Paying Guest, I just didn't absolutely love it as I think some people do. In fact it's actually right here. Oh, love having my red shelves right behind me. And this one I also bought last year for the Reading Women Challenge as it won the Lambda Literary Award, which was one of the challenges last year. And then I didn't get to it, even though I didn't even complete that challenge. So I am hesitant to say that I like, will for sure pick this one up, especially because it feels very like autumnal and wintry and I had it for pretty much all of autumn and winter and I didn't read it. The same is true for this one, which is another booktube darling, which is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Sutterfield. Again, I bought this one really cheap because a lot of people on booktube seem to like it and I'm intrigued by the premise, I just don't know if I ever will read it. And this one also I bought, I believe, early last fall and I didn't read it at all during the fall and winter. So I'm hoping that I will read this in September or October of this year. Otherwise, it's gonna go. And then I also have three nonfiction books that have all just been sitting on my shelves for quite a while. The first of which is A Garden of Marbles by Ruth Cassinger. This one is about plants and basically kind of their ecology uh, and like evolutionary development, which is interesting, but it's something I kind of already know a lot about, so I'm not sure how much this book will teach me. So yeah, this is also kind of maybe Another book about plants and their ecology is The Botany of Desire, A Plant's Eye View of the World, which I used to love Michael Pollan. I've read several of his books and I really enjoy him. In fact, I actually talked about him earlier in this video. However, I haven't read him in a while and I just don't know if he's still someone that I like actively want to read. Um, additionally, this one is also several years old. This one is almost 20 years old. It was published back in 2001 and I just don't know. I mean, I think especially reading science nonfiction, it does have to be somewhat more contemporary than that just because scientific discoveries move a lot faster than that. So this one is also a maybe. And then the last one on the chopping block is Ecology of a Cracker Childhood by Janice Ray. Janice Ray is a woman who grew up in southern Georgia and I actually was part of a like Green Reads, Environmental Reads book club that my local indie puts on for a couple months and then I couldn't make the book discussion for this book. It was picked sometime last fall and then I read like the first you know two chapters or something and then gave up on it and since have not returned to it and I just don't know. Memoirs are not usually my favorite. While I am interested kind of in southern Georgia I just don't know if I'll actually read this one. So those are the eight books that are on the chopping block so I will either read them or attempt to read them by the end of October. Additionally if you have any strong feelings about any of those books please put them in the comment section down below in terms of books that I should either really prioritize because you think I actually will really like them or if you hated them and you think I am right to get rid of them please let me know. Then 
we have the eight books that I'm like really excited to get to over the course of the next four months. And these ones also, if I don't get to them, I am going to unhaul them, unfortunately. So I really hope I get to all of them. The first two are books that I've already counted in this project. So they are kind of cheating, but they're both books that I think I will really, really enjoy. The first of which is My Buddy Read with Lindsay, Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. I've heard from many of my real life friends that I will absolutely love this and that I need to pick it up. So I need to do so, especially because this is one that's been sitting on my shelves for also the longest and uh, I just have never read it. So there's that one. Additionally, for my African Women Writers Project, I have She Would Be King by Wu Two More. I am very, very excited about getting to this one. It's my September pick, so I will definitely be getting to this one before October, and I'm really excited about it. And then I also have three other fiction picks. Because I had five fiction picks and three nonfiction picks in my chopping block, I decided to also do the same for my like five star predictions. So the other three fiction picks I have are Conjure Women by Afia Atakora. I talked about this one briefly in my 27 Black Women Writers video, which I'll put a link to up above. Very excited about this one. It takes place in the like immediate time before the Civil War as well as immediately after the Civil War. And it follows an enslaved woman and her daughter as well as the master's daughter and their kind of connected stories. So very excited about that one. Next is one that I've just acquired which is A Burning by Mega Majumdar. And this one I believe in the Goodreads description or somewhere it said for fans of Jupiter Lahiri, Tommy Orange, and Yal Jossi who are like three of my favorite writers which obviously you can't always trust what marketing says. You know sometimes they pick people that are just big names and vaguely compare it to this to this debut author but uh those are three of my favorite authors so I have high hopes for this one and this takes place in India and it follows three people whose lives become intertwined after a catastrophe in India so there's that one and then the last one is Writers and Lovers by Lily King I love coming of age stories everyone seems to love this uh, I've had it since March and I don't know why I haven't read it so this is the last one very excited about it then for my three nonfiction picks, the first of which I have is The Potlicker Papers, A Food History of the Modern South by John T. Edge. John T. Edge runs the Southern Foodways Alliance, which puts out the podcast Gravy, which I'm not a big podcast listener, but Gravy is one of my favorites. It's basically like stories of modern food in the South. Obviously, that is an intersection of many of my interests, and I think this will be as well in terms of the South and cooking and history are like three of my big buzzwords. So I have no reason to think that I won't enjoy this, especially because the food history of the modern South is a very fascinating one. So that's my first non-fiction five-star prediction. Next we have one of my most recent acquisitions, which is Hood Feminism Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by N Mickey Kendall. This one is basically in introduction into like black feminist theory. I talked about this one also in my 27 black women writers and it's basically an introduction to like black feminist theory as well as the idea that like feminism should include an acknowledgement of like basic human rights such as access to affordable and equitable medical care, transportation, affordable housing, and how all of those things are not really considered anymore in the feminist movement in large part because it's like been taken over by white women. So really really excited about this one as well. And then my last one was a Christmas present? I think it was a Christmas present from one of my best friends who's also a reader who I believe regularly watches my channel and that's In Other Words by Jumbo Lahiri. Jumbo Lahiri is tied for my favorite author of all time and I have been hesitant to get to this one mainly because I don't want to run out of things that she's written. Um, I've read everything else that she has put out and she now lives in Italy and doesn't seem to be writing anymore but I'm hoping she will write a novel in Italian and then it'll be translated and then I can have it in my life. But this is her memoir basically growing up in America as a child of Indian immigrants and then later finding herself in Italy where her and her family now live. And it actually was originally written in Italian which you can see here and then translated by someone else into English. So I am super excited about this one. Um, another one that I just like really want to get to. And also it's like relatively it's like 200 pages but half the pages are in Italian so it's like will be very quick to get through. I am really excited about it. So those are all of the 16 books that I am planning to get to before the end of October which brings me down to 49 books. Obviously I will be reading other books in the intervening time. My goal is to definitely be below 49 by the end of October. So those are all of my kind of 
preliminary TBR reduction plans. If you have any thoughts on any of the books that I've mentioned in this video in terms of books that you think I should get to sooner rather than later or books that you don't think are worth my time please let me know down in the comments below. Additionally if any of those 16 books I just mentioned are ones you're interested in buddy reading with me please let me know also in the comments down below. I would love to have a buddy to read any of these books. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!